Good day everyone, I'm the first presenter of the group 4 and I'll be discussing attitude of beds and outcrops. But before that, let me give you a little bit of background about geologic structures. Geologic structures are usually the result of the powerful tectonic forces that occur within the earth. These forces fold and break rocks, form deep faults, and build mountains. Now it's like a look of how the crust of the earth is deformed. Now, deformation is the process by which rocks bend, break, or flow in response to stress. So geologic structures form because of deformation. And now, going back to our topic. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Grand Canyon. As you can see, these rock formations are called bedding. Bedding is one of the most prominent features of sedimentary rocks, which are usually made up of piles of layers of sediments deposited one on top of another. The most basic geologic structure there is, is bedding, and bedding is the word geologists use to define the stratigraphic layers that form when sudden entry of rocks piled up. Now, if you look closer, this is what it looks like. This is the strata. For instance, let's think about this set of rocks right here. So if you look here, you can see these rocks obviously aren't horizontal. Now, the principle of original horizontality tells us they were at one point, but they've been tilted over. So this whole situation over here is called strike and dip. Geologists use the term strike and dip to describe how much bending and tilting has occurred. Strike, the angle between an imaginary horizontal line on the plane and the direction of the true north. Now, if you want to compare this figure right here to the previous picture, feel free to pause or go back. It's up to you. So let's imagine that this part here of my little block is the top of those rock layers. Now, where that ocean touches the top of the rock layers, we're going to figure out what direction it's pointing. So let's assume that it's northeast, and that is the strike of the rock. Imagine that water running down the same top of the surface, or at least the top of your layers, whichever direction the water is going to run, that's the dip. The angle between a horizontal plane and an imaginary line parallel to the steppest zone on the structure. So we have another example over here. So you can see we have imaginary vertical plane, imaginary horizontal plane, the rock, of course, the line of the strike, the strike dip symbol, and the dip direction. And you can see here, this is the piled rocks and the water line, as what I've said earlier, where the water flows, that's the direction of the dip. Now, we can measure strike and dip using a pretty easy tool called Brunton Compass. There are two types of dip. True dip, the maximum angle that a bedding plane, fault plane, or other geological surface declines away from a horizontal plane measured in a vertical plane that is perpendicular to the strike of the structure. The apparent dip, the maximum inclination of a bedding plane, full plane, or other geological surface measured from a vertical cross-section that is not perpendicular to the strike of the feature. In general, apparent dip is any dip measured in a vertical plane not perpendicular to the strike line. True dip can be calculated from apparent dip using trigonometry if you know the strike. Geologic cross-sections use apparent dip when they are drawn at some angle not perpendicular to strike. The last one, outcrops. As you can see in this video, these are an example of outcrops. An outcrop or rocky outcrop is a visible exposure of bedrock or ancient superficial deposits on the surface of the earth. These outcrops were formed by the intrusion of molten granite into pre-existing counter-rock at a depth of about 10 miles below the surface, 
Over millions of years, erosion removed thousands of feet of overlying rock, exposing the more resistant bodies of granite. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you all for watching and God bless.